So this is my Pacoma uh, lift from my two post automotive lift. I bought this thing and this particular side is leaking. Uh, I bought it that way. I knew it was a problem. So I need to rebuild the seals in this, uh, in this uh, hydraulic cylinder. And this will be a little easier or probably a lot easier than a normal hydraulic cylinder build. Uh, most guys that know what they're doing can rebuild one of these in like 10 minutes in a shop well equipped. Unfortunately, that's not me. Look at all this junk here. But I bought this from carliftparts.com. At least uh, when I made the purchase, it's a little cheaper to do that than to buy them off eBay. Not sponsored. Obviously, because I'm a small timer, nobody cares about me. Why the hell would they? Uh, that's the part number for the kit. You see, I ordered two. I'm going to rebuild the other side uh, also, even though it's not leaking yet, but I'm sure that's to come. On this end of the cylinder, this is the top side, uh, where it's got this uh, little bleeder valve up here. I don't think we'll have to mess with that. See if I can turn this over without making a mess on the other end. You can see it's got Facoma on there and some numbers. And it says Made in Germany too on there. Which uh, apparently that may be important when you're ordering parts. Because uh, there's two separate kits. Apparently these, these automotive lifts uh, are pretty generic. And uh, a lot of them use the same lifts for a... Uh, long period of time mine is an older lift and this is the part that matches my older lift anyway I'm going to show you this side here that's a that's a air hole and uh, even though that notch there I'm not sure why that notch is there but it is on both sides it looks like it's been like been cut out with a grinder but that Apparently is factory you can see somebody's tried to come over the top of this with some like putty or something or a epoxy to seal this up because it was leaking out this hole but this is a dry part of the cylinder there shouldn't you've got a problem in your cylinder if fluids coming out of this so you shouldn't have to cover up these things but it looks like that's what somebody tried to do is cover up this hole so the first thing we're gonna do is we've got to unscrew this end cap and uh, it's going to take this one I measured it I put a quarter inch drill bit in there fit nice and tight so we're going to have to, I'm probably going to put a quarter inch steel pin in there and try and drive it out with a hammer so I don't have to buy one of those crazy uh, wrenches just for this one little job So this is working. Unfortunately, the steel pin that I have, the steel punch pin, measures uh, like 255 thousandths rather than 250 thousandths. So I use this tiny little hammer to drive it in there uh, and use this tiny little hammer to start unscrewing it. It is working. It takes a surprisingly small amount of force, so you don't have to buy one of those fancy wrenches. You can put you a drill bit in there, even though, of course, the drill bits can be a little more brittle might crack on you but it used so little force that uh i think a uh, drill bit quarter inch drill bit would probably work to drive this thing out too so i'm going to continue unscrewing this and i'll show you what it looks like when i get that open all right this slot here does seem to per, uh, per, uh, have some sort of purpose as i turn this thing around there we go. I don't know how well you can see that I'm doing this one-handed. Okay, we figured out what the purpose of that notch is. This is not screwed in there. It's held in with this retaining ring. And so what first comes exposed as you're unscrewing this cap is this end of that retaining ring. And it's meant to ramp up on this tapered edge and spin this ring out now the new kit doesn't have one of these new rings so I'm supposing when we mount this back in here 
we'll have to use the other end of that ring drop it into that notch and essentially wrap that ring bend it back into place uh, to retain this cap in position so at least we know what that is but I'm a little disappointed because you know how you damage things when you tie into something like that hopefully this ring will work its way back into position uh, as we reinstall this back together okay here's what that piston looks like when it's all the way out left my pin in there so we'll have to put it back together shortly this is some sort of guide pin to keep it centered in the housing and really the truth is that's all this is too because this is a split uh, a washer ring of some sort whatever you want to call it and you can see how worn this guy is and that's clearly our problem that is the ceiling washer in our kit here when we install this ring this flared end will be pointed that direction towards the pressure in the piston and this piston was uh, caked in hydraulic fluid so that is for sure what was uh, going on. Fluid was getting past the ring up here and getting working its way down in the cylinder. That's why it was leaking. That's why it wasn't lifting. This first one is like a fiber washer or a wiper is probably what that is, a wiper. Keep debris out of here. And unfortunately, this split ring looks like it's the wrong size. So... We might have to retain the one that's on there and just install a new seal, cup seal, and new fiber washer. We're going to have some leftover parts, which they say is pretty typical on these things. And we're miss. I don't know if there's, I don't think there's supposed to be a seal down here on this one either. The other videos I've seen of this, there's also a seal down here, like a wiper type dust seal. But the only channel here is for that steel ring I just showed you. So really all we're going to install is uh, one or two of these, whatever it takes. Maybe it takes two to get all the way around. Don't know. We're going to find out. And then and steal the actual seal for this thing. I think this guy here is meant for that other end down there on probably newer models that... Uh, have a spot for that so we'll get to it okay it's gotten a little more complicated in that important ring right here there was first this o-ring and then over the top of it was this seal now the inside of that shaft measures exactly 1.5 inches now the seal that I want to put in there, or I think I'm supposed to put in there, you can see measures slightly more than that. I'm hoping it'll compress down to the right size when I force it into that cylinder and still seal things off. Uh, it's a little concerning. Don't know if it's going to work now. It looks like it should fit in there once that cup flares out beyond it. You can you might be able to visualize a little bit that cup is a little wider than the inside of that ring. And so even though it looks like it's not going to fit in there, it should still. I'll probably measure that and make sure that's okay. In the kit, there was a ring like this that would fit in there but there's just not going to be room to put this in and then put this guy in um, so I'm pretty sure just this guy gets put in so the width of this uh, opening for the o-ring or for the seal is exactly 250 thousandths it moved a little bit on me but it's 250 thousandths. You can see the width of this guy is 300 thousandths. Now the inner part of that 
is not quite uh, the same width. So I'm hoping it's 250 thousandths, but I don't have a good way of measuring it without squashing the hell out of that ring. So I'm just going to hope that fits in there well. To get this on, this is a pretty firm seal. So I'm going to heat up a cup of water and drop it in there. You can heat this up other ways by putting it in the microwave for a short period of time. But I worry about damaging it by getting it too hot. The nice thing about a cup of water is you won't get any part of this hotter than 212 degrees. Because obviously you can't boil water at a higher temperature than that without... Uh, special equipment and so forth. So anyway, put a cup of water in the microwave. I'll drop this in it for a short period of time and then I should be able to stretch it over the end and work it into place and we should be set. This fiber ring, it took one of those. So I've got an extra one of those too. Uh, there must be some of these that have two, two of these uh, fiber type wipers in here. So I think this kit's just designed to cover a lot of different pieces of equipment unfortunately it didn't have a new one of these for me i'm not going to put in that new one because it's not nearly long enough and i don't want it getting uh pushed uh, cattywampus in there and coming out so this is not important for sealing this is more as a as a guide so we're just going to leave this guy in here doesn't look particularly damaged okay i've been doing this wrong I actually called these guys at car lift parts and they were very helpful. Usually when you buy these little bitty kits like this, they don't really want to help you a whole lot, but man, they were awesome. Answered the phone right away, sent me to a guy that knew what he was talking about. Apparently, because you can, this, uh, I, damn, I've already started to pull this out. I, I should have left it there for this part of the video. But when it was down in here, this uh, seal was clearly too wide. I talked about it earlier in the video, but that was too wide to fit in there. Didn't settle in the right way. Uh, I thought that this seal was only used at the bottom. It was like a wiper more than anything. But apparently this is for like older ones where it's cupped and you point the cup towards the top. That's wrong. On this one, it is this two-piece one, which makes more sense. It looks like what came out. I was worried that... Uh, Maybe somebody had rebuilt this in the past and done it wrong, but on this particular uh, lift cylinder, this is the right seal. There can also be other Pacoma lifts or uh, other Pacoma cylinders that will use this one. So apparently there's some variations. That's why there's so much in the kit. Uh, and then down here, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, only took one of those two strips. So we're going to heat this one up and get that one into place. You'll probably have to uh, remove this split ring to get it around because it's a little bigger and harder to work into position. So I'll come back to you when I get this installed the correct way. This one doesn't seem to have, well it is cupped on one side. So let's put, you can see that sticks up a little bit there and then on the bottom it is flat. So we'll put the cup side up still on this one. Okay, so there really was no cup side to that. That was indeed in two layers, that blue slash black ring that was in the kit because it came apart as I was trying to install it. So get that black ring in there first and then put the blue ring on. Uh, there's no cupping on it. And then I put this ring back on. We're ready to lube this thing up. I get this fiber thing in there a little better once I get it wet with some uh, hydraulic fluid. And then uh, we're ready to insert it back in. Okay, got it all back together. That ring went right on in there, so nothing to worry about. I did lube it up with some hydraulic fluid, but yeah, you put that little hook in the in the hole that's in there and tap it back in place, and it spins right around. Everything's back together. I can feel some pressure on this thing now, and so I do believe it's all sealed up. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and all that garbage. I need more subscribers. If you want to give me a pity subscription, I'll take it. Thanks.